there and welcome along to another edition of What's the Word? Last weekend before Royal Ascot, so we're going to look ahead a little bit to that. Joining me this afternoon, we've got Brendan Duke. How are you, Dukey? Good form, thanks. Are you going to Royal Ascot, are you? I am. I made a, an executive decision there. Well, people, my people made an executive decision last week that I should go, but I, okay. I had to be there. So. Some, obviously, some good, uh, some good betting decisions made in the last couple of weekends, were there, too? Not good enough to justify a trip to Ascot, but um, if, if you build it, they will come. Okay, it's okay, kind of good. Stuff. So, Nicola, you well? You looking forward to it? I am. have to collect my hats later today, and uh, yeah, I'm all set then. Good stuff. And of course, uh, Jenna joins me as always. How are you? I'm good. I'm there Ready every day. For it? Can't wait. You're there for that day? Do you I have am. a topper? Uh, no, I, do, I don't think I need uh, one. Did the press need one? No, you hang about the but Queen. But like, I think... You well, I might get one. I might get one. I might yeah. get, if I'm convinced. And you know, I sourced one for Kevin Blake last year. Oh, really? Yeah. You I'm don't want to restrict Hats off to you. <laughs> hey. On where you can or go. on, as the case may be. Uh, looking forward to next week. Well, what, what horse or race are you most looking forward to? Uh, a couple. Uh, my banker is Ickworth in the Queen Mary for William McCreary and Billy Lee. And I'm really interested in Equilateral in the King's Stand for Charlie Hills, who's got the favourite in Batash. But I think Equilateral oh, you're a big fan. is a sprinter. Do you know? Places. Here, I'll back this up. A fellow Mead man who really likes equilateral as a sprinter eddie Lynham. eddie Lynham is a big fan so oh, there really you go good stuff so then he knows something about sprinters Fast not like eddie, you sure. yeah exactly uh horse or racing most looking, looking forward to the gold cup and i'm probably going to be opposing stradivarius i'm really excited to frankie see watches gardens. this i know sorry frankie yeah. <laughs> He watches all the Ladbroke content. Yes. Uh, right, what about you, Jiggy? Well, the Prince of Wales looks a doozy. Brilliant. All, nice. all the main contenders are showing up, and from a punting point, point of view, and well, also from a purist point of view, Lopi Fernandez in the Chesham. Oh, yeah. The two year old I'd be most impressed with this year. So. Yeah, yeah. Likewise. Yeah, stunning, stunning look. And by the way, Lope de Vega can't tire a loser at the moment either. Another couple of winners yesterday for him. All uh, right, let's move on to the Saturday action, and we'll start at Sandown with the scurry, which gets underway. Listed contest over five furlongs at 2.05. We might whiz through Saturday, really, and look ahead to ask him. So let, let's go with this. Uh, the betting, 7-2, Leodis Stream, 9-2, uh, Street Parade, as well as Well Done Fox, 11-2, um, Bar. Yeah. Who do you like in this? Well, I'm curious to watch his all fancy here, because I fancy curious. Uh, the only ahead that was absolutely Really? Shocking. Is that That's it? Pathetic. That is uh, dreadful. Two, that was way. worse than your hat's off. Uh, yeah, I'm only, I know, like, yeah. three minutes in here. No. Well, Curious was only beaten ahead by Leodi's dream over course and distance in April. Uh, better off at the weights here. Like, Henry Candy's team are just not in form at the minute, but I'm hoping, I fancy one of his later on, as does Mr. Duke, and I'm just hoping this is going to be the Saturday where he's going to kick off. And Curious, she's a smooth traveller that just needs things to fall right, and I think the race will be set up for her, so I'm hoping she'll swoop late. So Curious for me at 13. Good stuff, it's an impossible race. The Fab finished last the last day, and myself and David have come to a consensus on another horse who finished last the last day. She's not ideally drawn, but she's only had five runs. Do you fancy Curious as yeah. well? Yeah. Well, wow. I, I mean, I thought 13 to 2 was just a little bit big, but I won't be having a bet, so I don't really fancy her now. Uh, right. But she's my nominal selection. Right, let's move on to York then, because this could turn out to be a bit of an e-board trial this three o'clock over mile and five Mekong. big favorite yeah at 11 to 10 austrian school is seven to two and then at seven to one you've got making miracles and raheen house obviously the second dxb looks a nice bit of form juki can, can you look past it uh, he's he, he's hard to look past because that, that was a really good run particularly with how hard he pulls he just will not settle this horse but he has a big engine he won't have any issues with the ground but 11 to 10 about a horse who pulls hard just isn't for me. And we've, at the moment, we've got the dead eight, Tom. Yeah. If the dead eight were to continue up to post time, I'd be interested in Buzz at 25 to yeah. 1. Buzz is a horse, the late developer, taking a bit of time, working its way through the handicap. Looks like it wants a step up and trip, gets the step up and trip, definitely wants soft ground, gets soft ground. I would expect, it was a decent comeback in a hot race in Newcastle. I would expect a, a significant step up on that. Whether it can step up significantly enough, but 25 to 1 each way, I wouldn't quite want the place for a bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of fancied Raheen House just a little bit on the downgrade, gelded, sun to see the stars. Maybe this soft ground might not be in his favour, but what do you make of it? Oh, I spent about 25 minutes on this race and it was the biggest waste of 25 minutes. I could have stopped Stick after Econ. three minutes, yeah. Like you go back to its, its win at Haydock, won by seven lengths last year on heavy ground. And I just think the softer the ground, the better the ch his chance will be. And if it's, if, even if it was grand ground, he'd still be the horse to beat. He's the improver, typical Michael Stout uh, improver. Like, th there was fortunes for this earlier on the week. And uh, I think Mekong is going to be extremely hard to beat. 
Yeah, that's fair enough. Elsewhere on Saturday, uh, you like a couple at York? Oh, yeah. Uh, really, really interested in two in the first race. Uh, Mawaki runs in the opener, and I think she's still well handicapped. She's won her last two. She's up £10 for a Weatherby win. But I don't think that... I, I, I still ha don't think she's reached the ceiling of her, her ability. Uh, when she won over course and distance and made a second come out and won next time at Newcastle, uh, she's by far, and her action suggests she'll cope fine with the ground. David O'Mara has had seven winners in the last fortnight and the jockey who which is all important in these races uh, these women ride are races joanna mason has a 25 winners from 151 rides so she's a 17 percent strike rate yeah. which is fine for that level and i went back and watched her in space war at hamilton the other day and she was perfectly fine okay. settled quite well okay. strong enough in the finish so i fancy moaki in the 150 and in the 225 in, in fairness when you tipped up a women's race uh winner oh it was juki wasn't it yeah Juki gets the winner a couple of weeks and ago. Oh, Juki has it sorted. Yeah. Megan, go as thanks for that, Tom. Yeah. 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 In the 225 at York, get not it, I think will win this. This is my strongest fancy the whole weekend. Four, strongest fancy of the weekend? Yeah. Four, 225 at York. Yeah, 14 runs at York. Three wins, three seconds, three thirds. Unbeaten over seven furlongs. Three thirds. Three yeah. thirds. Okay. <laughs> Three th I've improved at that. Yeah, you have, you have, you have. Hang the around The THs that, are going strong at the moment. <laughs> uh, and... Unbeaten over seven furlongs at York when there's been soft in the going description. Paul Mulrennan has been on board for four of his seven career wins. Always takes a few runs just to get the hang of things. Uh, down to America 92, dropped two pound for Tursk. And Michael Dodds, like David O'Mara in the openers, coming into form. He's had five winners in the last fortnight. 14 to 1, 11 to 1, 4 to 1, 10 to 1 and 12 to 1. So they're not even obvious horses. Yeah. That's what I love about trainers. When you go into their form lines, see they're winning with big prices, that means... I think that could be the, could potentially be a thousand career winner for Paul Rennan as well. Well, so I hope it is. There we go. Uh, well, obviously it could happen in the interim, but it'd be nice for you. Good yeah, for you. Not, not for him. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, anything else on Saturday, Juki? Couple for you, Tom. Sandown. The 315 Sandown. This green side who won the race uh, in 2017 off a pound lower. He's just in really good form. He's the best horse in this race. I'm a little bit worried about. Uh, there's two possible pace angles because that's what undid him in Epsom. They just didn't go any gallop, and he is a hold up performer. But I do think he's well handicapped, and I'd be, even with the, the worries about the early pace, I'd be hard pressed to see him out of the frame, and he's six to one. I agree, and uh, one thing, I think he's better going right handed. Last four wins have been right handed. I don't think he's as good going left handed. That's a fair point. He has a good record in Sandown, actually. Yeah, yeah. Sandown, uh, Windsor, uh, Newmarket. Oh, okay. Good stuff. Thank you, Nick. Well, let's get our actually best bets from Saturday. We'll do that, and then we'll uh, roll into the Ascot cover. So go on, give us a three for the weekend. And then we'll go into Ascot. Right. Well, I'm struggling a bit, but I'll nap one in the 240 in Chester. This Durston, who relished the step up and trip to a mile and six, was snaffling a good prize in Donny the last race. A really well-bred horse. And now, the Donny win was on quick ground, but all the family relish cut. He gets that. And despite, back in, despite dropping back to a mile and a half, there's a couple of Johnson horses in here, so we should get a decent pace to run it. I just think he's a horse who's improved and he'll justify his pedigree in time. Still well handicapped. He only got three pounds for that win in Doncaster. I think he'd be hard to beat, so I'll nap him. I'll stick in Greenside in the 315 as well. And go on, I'll go for Buzz in the three o'clock. Buzz, too. Ah, well, that, well you'd, you'd be buying a top hat, not renting it yeah, if he wins. Back, yeah. uh, right, go on, uh, Nicola. Best bets oh, for the weekend. Mine's Sites are purely set and right. Purely Ascot, set and ask. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave, we'll that, leave that out. Okay, go on. Best okay, uh, get knotted in the 225 at York. Milwaukee in the 150 at York. And I will throw in Morrowweed in the 335 at York for Andre Atzeni and Roger Varian. I think you can forget it, his run at Newmarket. Got outpaced coming into the dip. Didn't get a good ride. Has already beaten the favourite Dazzing Dan at Doncaster. And I think Morrowweed can win the 335 at York. Good stuff. My best of the weekend is Cruella de Vil for Johnny Merchant. That's meant handicap at Limit. <laughs>